Hello, this is the Lion Ben C. Welcome you to Rumble Roses Double X. I was having a pro audio problem with the first stream, so we're trying it again. Hopefully, this has fixed it. We will see very shortly. Alright, if somebody could please let me know if this has fixed the audio glitches we were having, I'd really appreciate it. And if it has, then we will go into uh, what's going on with everything, and hopefully we'll, you know, everybody will be able to hear me and, and have a lot of fun with what's going on. <laughs> but don't worry, if you missed anything, the stuff from the earlier stream will still go up on YouTube. It'll just be a much shorter one. If somebody could please let me know if the uh, audio is still messed up. Okay, much better now. Okay, so since the audio is doing better, I will actually go into what's going on for the next couple of days. First, we have... Uh, Two hours of Rumble Roses today, plus uh, uh, this Sunday, we have a four-hour Rumble Roses CPU tournament to determine uh, who is the greatest Rumble Rose, at least when the computer uses them. And I'm also going to be playing Lego uh, Marvel Super Heroes 2. That'll be being played after this. Next week, there will be no uh, stream because I will be on vacation. Ah! 
so. Uh, <clears throat> now, in June, Borderlands, the pre sequel, will be added back into the rotation uh, to mark the one year anniversary of my streaming stuff. <clears throat> so I'm going to play uh, Borderlands, the pre sequel, all the way through. And then after that, I'm going to play Arkham City. And then this October, I will be playing the newest Fatal Frame that just came out this year. So, yeah, the next couple of uh, months, we have a lot going on. That includes me also playing Marvel Midnight Suns. Uh, the... Uh, Marvel Lego Super Heroes 2 uh, and maybe even some more Lego games if you guys really want those uh, Warriors Orochi 3 Monster Hunter Rise and if we get 4 more followers uh, Resident Evil 7 will be also be added into that collection so yeah a lot going on And right now we are looking for Mikado. We need four more with uh, against victories against her in singles matches. We also need to build up our tag match. Um, you know what? Let's let's see if we get more there. I'm glad I reached 100 subscribers, too. For those who don't know, the, the tournament going on this Sunday is in response to me hitting 100 subscribers on YouTube. I'm at 101 right now, and I want to say thank you to everybody who, uh, who subscribed, who have been following, commenting, and everything else you guys do. It, it means a lot to me. Now, since the computer will actually be the ones playing, I will be uh, doing uh, uh, commentary. I'll be playing good old JR and maybe a little bit of uh, Jerry the King Lawler talking about some puppies. <laughs> Now, the thing about the, uh, uh, the match th for this tournament is that none of them are going to be in their superstar modes. It's going to be all just their base mo modes. Also, starting next weekend, uh, 2K22 will go back into rotation. It's just it had made me very mad last time I played it, and so...
I really need her to switch. That would honestly be the best. Because then I won't have to worry about the... Uh, she'll have a weight that Dixie doesn't. There we go. Perfect. I didn't think that one's gonna let it go. <laughs> that would be hilarious. That that won it for me. There we go. <laughs> No championship for them. <laughs> so we beat their face, their face form. So they went and turned heel to try to 
get past us. One of the pain in the butt things I'm gonna have to go through every character uh, and make sure they're in their default outfits for the tournament. Cause like I'm gonna have to change Argyle, I'm gonna have to change Miss Spencer, who I think is still in uh, the Olga outfit, cause somebody had requested that. Get off of me. She only her cuddles of death really build her up. When it comes to uh, submission holds, Mikado really doesn't get built up from submissions. of death. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right. Tag team champion match. Oh, Lord. I should have known it was going to be those two because nobody had ever won the championship before. But here we go. We're going to watch the full entrance. Makoto Aihara and Aiger, the great hobby animal, strong Don't don't give me an oh no, this is gonna be hell. Don't do that to me, Ashton. <laughs> Cause I have to win 15 matches with them as the champ to get one of the outfits. And for those wondering, yes, there is another way to do it. But that involves basically just uh, loading the, up my save, saving, and then turn, and then backing out to the title and doing that over and over and over again. That is so annoying. I'd rather do it this way. That and I need the money from the matches anyway. So there's one. Lady X Substance and Lady X Subsistence. They don't have a tag team name, really? Oh, that's just that's just bad. <clears throat> Don't tell me this is gonna be <clears throat> I'm sitting there hitting the, the counter, it's not doing the counter.
what what level of BS was that? Choke her out. <laughs> okay, that one does do a slight build. The hell? She's going to get out. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Nope. She got out. Robotic standard line. Yeah. <laughs> 
I might get her this time. I might get her this time. Yep, got her. There we go. We're the other champion. There we go. So now I have to defend that belt 15 times and I have to beat Mikado four more times in singles. And then to get the last two things after that, I have to go into Queen's matches. And in Queen's matches, I have to win every sing. Uh, I have to view every single thing. So. Go in here. Yeah, because see. Lost to nobody, which means that's the uh, defendant 15 times and prove you're stronger than Mikado. And then these are both Queens matches. And then I have to buy all of these. Oh boy. Hey, Dobado, how you doing? Yeah, it was annoying, but I did it. Yeah, oh, those things are so expensive. All right. Let's go down here. Let's start uh, doing some of these. Uh, we're on yoga. We'll make her a bunny. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, or who missed the announcement earlier, I have hit over 100 subscribers, so we will be doing uh, a four-hour tournament this Sunday of Rumble Roses. It'll be computer-played, but I will be doing commentary. Uh, I already have the, um, no, I, the list I have right now, or the setup I have right now does not have the two Lady X's on it. Should I, uh, I'll take a consensus right now. Should I put the two Lady X's on that roster? Because I can play with them in exhibition match, which is where this will take place. So we have one vote for no. Ashton was here. I don't know if he still is. Oh. Uh, but yeah, anybody who's in the comments. Uh, we have one vote against, and if nobody else votes uh, in a thing, then <laughs> uh, Dobo gets what he wants.
I mean, yeah, the, 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 the Lady X's are pretty broken. Yeah, with stats alone, I, I could really see the, the two Lady X's winning. Uh, they, they are very broken. So, yeah, like I said, the, the list I have now only has the 20 regular fighters. Oh, she wants to lose again. Yeah, I'll get the first one when I hit there. So. Uh, also, Dobodo, you might have missed, but next week, there, next weekend, there will be no game uh, or any streams because I am on vacation. why I'm doing uh, this instead of uh, 2K22, which is what I should be playing today. But this game gets a lot better uh, response than any other game I've played. And it was shocking to think why. Beautiful women in sexy outfits throwing each other around. Who could have ever thought that this would be my biggest game? <laughs> Not going with my family. I have been married for twenty for almost 21 years. This December will be 21 years. In that time, I have realized that if you want to have a good life with your significant other, you need time away from each other. And this is mine. I go visit some friends, and we just hang out and, and enjoy each other's company. And my wife gets a break from me, and I get a break from her. Because the big mistake a lot of people make is they think 
that you got to spend all your time together. And you really don't. In fact, it, it it's actually worse for you because you have no time to decompress. I mean, everybody needs a break. That That is 100% the truth. But some people get, like, really uh, defensive about it. And, like, no, what are they doing if they go off on a vacation? If you trust each other, if that trust is there, there's no problem. <laughs> this has been relationship advice with Uncle Ben. Uh... Like, it was, it was hilarious. Uh, at some of the places I worked, uh, people knew my wife, and but I would go to the movies with other people, sometimes girls, and people would act like, oh, does your wife know you're going out to the movies with girls, with these girls? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, she does, because I don't lie. <laughs> it, it always used to crack me up. And they're like, oh, my wife would never let me do that. And I'm like, well, then you don't have a good relationship with your wife. She thinks you're going to do something. <laughs> the funniest one, the funniest one was I was taking a friend of mine to go see uh, Hunger Games. Her boyfriend had no interest in seeing it. And I'm always up to see movies. I, I'm a, a movie aficionado. I, I love movies. I'll... Uh, I'll, I'm up to see basically anything. So I told her I would take her. And her boyfriend said it was cool. And But somebody I was working with was like, does your wife know you're taking uh, her to go see this movie? And I'm like, yes, yes, she does. And uh, she tried to say I was lying. So I handed her my phone. And I told her my wife is two on my uh, speed dial. And she pick, she picks up my phone and she starts calling. And she's like, I'm calling her. I'm like, okay. I'm just standing there the whole time. I don't panic or nothing. She's like, I'm really calling her. I'm like, okay. <laughs> my wife picks up and she flips out and hangs up. So my wife immediately calls me back and goes, uh, what what the heck was that? And I said, oh, that was, uh, the girl's name was Ashley. I said, that was Ashley. She didn't think that you knew I was taking, uh, uh, the other girl's name was Rose. You didn't think I was taking Rose to the movies. And she goes, I better know, I bought the damn tickets. <laughs>
Well, 90% of the time. Uh, for those who, who don't see this, uh, Dobodo said, it's weird that people are solo trust or perhaps have sex or cheating on the mind. I suppose people like Jerry Springer are to blame for that, uh, along with reality TV and stuff like that. Um, no, what I what I found is 99% of the time when people are like that, it's because they were cheated on before. So because somebody else heard them like that, there's a doubt in the back of their mind that the next person is going to do the same thing. It takes a long time to get over having your trust broken with that, even if you're with somebody else. Um. I started talking about relationships and stuff and lost two viewers. It's hilarious. <laughs> We're just here to watch beautiful, uh, beautiful girls with their tits bouncing everywhere. I don't want to hear things that I'm actually going to need in my real life. How dare you? this to make up for it i will tell you guys i will tell the story of the dumbest guy i ever met in the military i i was in the i was in the army for uh 11 years six years active duty and the other five were uh in the reserves and this is by far the dumbest guy i've ever met Uh, now, I, I will say his last name because I doubt anybody who's watching this or watches it later is going to know who it is. And if he, for some reason, ever hears this, he needs to know he was this dumb. So, his name was uh, Frazier. That was his last name. I won't say his first name, but that was his last name. Uh, when you get to a unit in the Army, uh, a lot of times the first sergeant will call you up and have you stand in front of the whole unit and basically just say your name so everybody knows who you are. And... Uh, so that was my first time ever seeing Frazier, but my first interaction with him was this. We were walking towards end of the day formation. Now, for those who've never been in the military or anything like that, end of the day uh, formation is you get together, they put out like, hey, this is what's going on tomorrow. This is what time our first formation is. And anything that happened that day that needs to be passed on. So as I'm going up to, uh, uh, formation, I get called over by the new guy, uh, his, uh, Frazier. And he says, at the time I was a, uh, private first class of PFC. He's like, Hey, PFC, can you come over here? I'm like, yeah, what's up, man? Hey, uh, my, uh, my section chief told me to come over here and put the lock on the side box, but I don't know what that is. And so in my head, I'm going, 
Well, it, it obviously can't be what I think it is. It can't be a lock, you know, like a padlock or something like that. It's got to be something else because in the Army, there's a lot of times where you'll nickname something or something will have a uh, an acronym, and so you'll just say it. And so I said, a lock on the side box. He's like, yeah, it's right over here. So I walk over and... Um, they have these big trucks, and on the side it's this box where they put a lot of their gear in. I And he's like, I, I'm supposed to put the lock on it. Roses. And so I'm looking at it, and I'm like... It, it, and I'm looking at it, and like the only thing I can think of is that this is a... Uh, that he is talking about a physical lock. But I'm like, he can't be. And so... I start talking to him and I go, uh, what exactly did he say? And he goes, go over to there and put the lock on the side box and lock it. And I'm like, okay. And I walk over and I move the lid of the box. And there's the padlock sitting on top. And I said, the lock right there. And I hook it. I hook it for him so he can lock it. And he goes, oh, that's what he meant. Uh, I've, I've never seen that before because all the locks I know are, are master locks. To which I flip the lock over and it says master lock on it. I wish that was a joke. Or that was the dumbest thing this man had ever done. But it's not. That was just the first case of the silliness that was Frasier. We were driving around. Uh, we were in a 13-passenger van. We were doing something. And uh, Frasier goes, hey, what's the water tower for? And we all stop. And we're like, no, no. He, he did not just ask what the water tower is for. Or no, excuse me. The first thing he asked is uh, what's in the water tower. To which uh, one of the guys goes, sand. It's got sand in it. And Frazier proves that he's not completely hopeless when he goes, no, nah, they call it a sand tower then. So then he asks us, what's it for? And so I I go, what what do you think it's for, Frazier? And he goes, uh, oh, it's for heating up the water because it's so close to the sun. And so I explain to Frazier what the water tower is for. And he goes, in Florida, we don't have those. To which I respond, the one in Orlando has big Mickey Mouse ears on it. You can see it from the highway. And then he goes, well, well, I'm from Jacksonville. I said, that one has a Jaguar on it. They show it before every football game. <laughs> no, it, well, water towers are even in the city. Like I said, he, he's from Jacksonville, Florida. Their water tower has a big picture of the Jacksonville Jaguars logo on it. They show it before every football game. There was another time we were riding in a, in a, a big van and people were picking on Frazier about something. And he decided that the smartest thing for him to do would be to jump up to try to intimidate a guy in a van. 
I don't know if you've ever attempted to stand in a van, but uh, it's not very tall. So he jumps up trying to act tough and you just watch his head hit the roof and go at an odd angle. And he's like, what, what did you say? <laughs> Crack the whole van up because we're like, are you serious? There is no way you think you look tough right now. Hey, we got a reward. It's one of the out it's one of the uh, swimsuit outfits. The floral one. And we can even use this to get to move towards the next one. But yeah, we also, also something to tell everybody who's watching this or watches it later. If you have a friend who was ever in the military, ask them what they were got with. Every single person in the military has been gotten by a practical joke. If they claim they haven't, they're lying. We, we all have, period. It happened to all of us. Anybody who's, anybody who says otherwise it is lying their backsides off. Okay, it, it's just the way that goes. Uh, and I'll be honest, they got me with soft spots in the armor. I was a brand new private, and we're told we have to listen to uh, everything that our sergeants tell us. So a sergeant comes up to me on a vehicle I've never seen before and said uh <laughs> hey i need you to uh i need you to take a rubber mallet and tap the outside of the tr of the vehicle and every time the armor sounds different i want you to put an x on it and if it's a big section put a circle so, I start doing this. It's like, ding, 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 ding. Oh, this, this sounds just so different right here. Sounds very different. This whole section sounds different. It looked like a dyslexic played tic-tac-toe on my little side of my vehicle. <laughs> it was horrible. And everybody's laughing. And, and that's what they got me with. And you know what? I can admit that. <clears throat> Uh, and I've gotten other people. The vehicle I drove in the military uh, was a big tracked vehicle. Uh, and uh, a track vehicle is like a tank. The 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 things that replace the wheel are called tracks. <clears throat> so we had a big track vehicle, 13 ton vehicle. If it's going to turn, it's going to turn, so it doesn't have turn signals. So I'm teaching a guy named Garrison, his very first time ever working with the machine. And I start walking him through how to do it. And I'm like, uh, I, I show him all the different hand signs to, show, to put on the headlights, the brights, the infrareds, the blackouts. And then... I hold out my arm in a hand position for turning on your turn signal. And he stops and he looks at me, looks down at the selector switch for the lights, looks back at me, kind of pops himself out of the vehicle and starts counting all the light fixtures in front of it, climbs back down, looks at it, disappears inside, comes back out with the book that tells you all the checks you're supposed to do, flips through it to the lights, and starts reading it. This whole time, I am holding out my hand, asking him to check the left turn signal. The other guy who's checking the back, the lights in the back of the vehicle is on the ground laughing He, because I'm holding this for so long.
And so he's sitting there holding out his hand. Uh, or he finally, he looks at me and he's, for five minutes, I've been holding out my hand for him to check this turn signal. And he finally, he looks at me, he goes, I can't find it. And I go, Garrison, I told you, there's no turn signals on this thing. He goes, oh man, starts getting mad at me. So I go, all right, are you ready to keep going? He's like, yeah. And I hold up to test the right turn signal. And he looks down and then looks at me and goes, hey. I almost got him again. The sad thing is I got Garrison with another one that same time. Now, for those who don't know, track vehicles do not use shocks like a car does. They use these big hydraulic pistons to absorb the, the shock, but you cannot bounce a, like on a car, you can bounce a car up and down with its shocks. You cannot do that to a track vehicle. That, and like I said, this vehicle is 13 tons. I get Garrison on top of the vehicle, and I told him this is a new one. We haven't had a chance to put it into the book. Uh, I need you to uh, jump up and down and test the shocks on this vehicle. I will not let you. And had the guy who was on the ground acting like he was checking. And I had Garrison doing this for six months until finally somebody took pity on him and explained to him that it was not a real check. For six months, every, every Monday, he climbed on top of the vehicle and jumped around while I sat on the ground and told him that he was moving a 13-ton hydraulic piston vehicle. And Garrison weighed maybe a hundred and a uh, hundred and fifty pounds. <laughs> uh, Dobodo told a story of, of having a guy at a construction site get an air sample by waving a paper bag outside. We do that one in the army. It's called an exhaust sample. And what happened was we had a guy his whole military career, he'd always just been a driver for other people. He had never messed with our vehicles. And so he got told, you have to uh, submit an exhaust sample. Now, I didn't do this one. I just watched it. So the guy goes over and we tell him to take a trash bag and put it around the exhaust on the... Uh, vehicle and fill up the trash bag with exhaust and he does and then we had him tie we're like okay pull it off and tie it off quickly you can't let the exhaust escape then the guy playing the prank brings him into the motor pool or the motor bay where uh, vehicles go if they have to have any work done and gets a uh, uh, a wax pencil to write on it what vehicle it came from now, while he's doing this, the chief of the motor pool comes in. This is the guy who's in charge of everybody in the motor pool. He's a chief warrant officer, which is a very uh, high rank in the military, or can be a high rank. His, his was. He walks around and he looks. His name was Chief Archibald. And he goes, what the hell are you two doing? And the guy playing the prank goes, uh, he told us later in his head, he was like, well, I'm screwed either way. So I might as well just lean into this. So he looks the chief dead in the eye and goes, exhaust sample, sir. And chief looks at the, the guy who's getting the prank pulled on him, looks back at the guy pulling the prank and goes, it's about goddamn time. I'm about to come down here and yell at y'all for not getting it done. I better have that on my desk by this afternoon. Walks out of the motor bay and starts laughing his ass off.
So, this is the stupid stuff we do in the military. Uh... Uh, another great one, and there's so many people who might go into the military and hear these and won't won't fall into it, is to ask people to get four feet of chow line. Chow line, of course, is what you stand in to go to food to eat. <laughs> or, uh... Now, there are some that when you hear it, you will think that it's bull that anybody would ever fall for it. But I have seen people fall for blinker fluid. We have had people fooled with go get a, uh, <coughs> go get blinker fluid for the Humvee. Or, uh, another really fun one. Hey, thanks, Orange. Uh, another really fun one that I love is we have had people get fooled with, uh, go get me a box of grid squares. For those who don't know, grid squares are the markings on a map. They're the squares on a map that show, like, where you are. Um, another really, uh, one that we pulled on somebody, but it kind of backfired on us was, uh, we, um, in the military, your ranks, uh, if you're enlisted, your rank, another way to say your rank is E with a number in front of it or a number behind it. So, a brand new private with nothing on their their shirt would be an E1. A uh, the highest enlisted rank in the army is an E9. So that's important for the. Uh, uh, for this prank we told a guy that we needed a special tool for the radio and to go get us a prick E7 and we told him to go to the sergeant first class to ask for it a sergeant first class is an E7 so we basically told him to go to an E7 and ask for a prick E7 And the E7 came back. He was our sergeant. He came back and was like, who here is wasting this private, this fine private's time sending him to me? Angst Orange asked a question, and I, I have to look. I can't look at it right this very second. It looks to be a joke, though, and I hope it's really funny. I'm going to tell everybody once I see it.
another very dumb person I met in the military was uh, a sergeant. Uh, one of the guys I went to, uh, while I was in the military with, was a uh, was a former Golden Gloves boxer. Uh, he was an amateur boxer before he joined the military. And he was a heavyweight boxer. He was like a solid dude. And we had had a rash of people stealing uh, uniforms from laundry rooms where somebody would be doing their laundry and somebody would uh, come in and take it take their stuff out of like the uh, the dryer or the uh, washing machines Man, hit me with the burning hand. So, our colonel finally said, hey, if you catch somebody uh, uh, stealing from you, you do what you gotta do. And so... You know what? I should be able to win it for this. Anyway. So, Griff goes. It was the weekend. We had just had a uh, change of command. Where our captain left and we had a new captain coming in. So, it was our very first day. Uh, it was our first weekend with this new captain. Griff goes to check his clothes and to put his stuff in the washer to the dryer. And as he does, he notices that his uh, his PT uniforms are gone. The ones you wear when you're doing your workouts in the morning. So he goes, what the hell? And he hears a dryer running. So he walks over and checks that dryer. Uh, and when, you, when he opened the uh, dryer, he found somebody else's clothes and then his PT uniforms. So he grabs out his PT uniforms and he puts them in the dryer with his clothes, mad. And then he sits in the laundry room where he can see the door, but nobody can see where he is. And he waits. And then all of a sudden, this sergeant from another battery comes in, opens up the dryer, or opens up his dryer and starts pulling stuff out and starts looking around. And finally, Griff steps out of where he was hiding. He goes, what you looking for, sir? Or what you looking for, sir? Looking for the uniforms that you took out of my washer? Now, Griff, like I said, he, he was a Golden Gloves heavyweight boxer. He was 5'11", but like 250. And it was all in his chest and arms. The dude was just massive. And... <laughs> The sergeant who decided to steal his stuff was five foot six and like 140 pounds at the most. Soaking went holding a brick and constipated. So he goes, I don't know what you're talking about. And he walks by Griff and he tries to shoulder check Griffin. And Griff just stands there, doesn't move at all. Like, this is a baby trying to move a, uh, a grown adult. The, the Griff does not move. And the guy walks by him, starts walking down. And all of a sudden, from the stairway, when he thinks he's safe, he yells out, You punk-ass bitch! Griff went, Oh, hell no. Took off down the stairs. Finds the sergeant, said, What you call me? The sergeant puts up his fist. Griff punches him in the face, drops him. The sergeant starts getting up, and he says, Stay down. Sergeant balls up a fist, goes to hit him. Griffin goes, no, hits him twice, and lays him out. During this, the the uh, 
CQ, which is the people who are there to maintain order in the barracks, round the corner and see Griff laying out this sergeant. And so they call the MPs, they call an ambulance for the sergeant, <laughs> and Griff go, has to go to the hospital because he has to get his knuckles checked out because he broke the dude's orbital bone. He punched him so hard. And in walks the new captain. Captain looks at Griff and goes, what were you thinking? And he says, well, the colonel said, do whatever I have to do if I caught somebody stealing from me. We all found out about this Monday morning when the colonel said, when I said, do it, whatever you had to do in case somebody was stealing from you, I meant call the MPs, not knock the dude out and break his face. <laughs> And uh, I was active duty from 2002 to 2008 during the beginning of uh, Operation OIF. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> All right. Uh, the joke that uh, uh, Angst Orange put up was, how do you call the security guards out? Uh, uh, outside of the Samsung. I, I believe it's what do you call the... Yeah, it's what do you call the security guards outside of the Samsung? You call them the Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> so... <clears throat> Alright, we're going to have a really quick pause. I'll be right back. I have to use the restroom real quick. And then I'll be right back and we'll play another hour of this. So, see you guys very, very soon.